Would you mind maybe just giving your perspective about why we're seeing this wave on the campuses? Yeah, yeah. sure. And be just totally honest about your perspective on it. DEI. DEI. It's the head of the snake. Yeah, of course. So what's the logic of DEI? The logic of DEI is that the world can, is a world is split between oppressors and oppressed and uh, perpetrators and victims. And when you split the world that crudely and that incorrectly, the Jews are going to get the short end of the stick every single time. How do we know that? Uh, we, we know that because what was the great innovation of Israel? The great innovation of Israel was we will never be victims again. Right? Never. There's no virtue in being a victim. No virtue in being a victim. We will never be victims again. And uh, so when DEI splits the world between victims and persecutors and oppressors and oppressed, and we say we're never going to be victims again, um, we're going to be hated. And now how do we know that's true statistically? Because I always like to go back to the data. How do we know it's true statistically? Two years ago there was a study that came out of um, the, the political, religious, and social beliefs of DEI professionals. I use professionals in quotes. Let's say DEI bureaucrats. Which now, there are so many at these colleges. University of Michigan, I told some of my friends who have kids at Michigan and who went there, I'm like, you're number one in the country. They're like, at what? I'm like, at DEI professionals. 163, according to the study. Full time. What are they? So uh, I don't know how many Yale has. Probably a lot. And uh, all right, but, 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 but what's, the, what's, the, what's the larger point here? The, the, the larger point is that, um, is, uh, is, so you have all these professionals and they're involved in, 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 every, in every step of the way, but always separating oppressors and oppressed, persecutors and victims. And there was a study done about their beliefs and it showed, it was a study of their tweets, of the public tweets of DEI professionals, and it showed they were obsessively anti-Israel and that they commented on Israel way more than any other issue, and 96% of the comments were anti-Israel. This was two years ago. This is before now. 96% of the comments were anti-Israel. And it actually fit the um, International Holocaust Remembrance Association's definition of anti-Semitism, which one of its components is um, obsessive anti-Israelism. And like, what is, why are they commenting on Israel so often, and why are they commenting on Israel so negatively? It has really very little to do with their, their jobs. And, uh, and uh, this was two years ago, and it actually fit the international definition of, uh, of um, anti-Semitism. And, uh, and now that this ideology is so pervasive and persistent um, in the universities, it was established two years ago that there was this huge problem with anti-Semitism among the DEI people. And uh, nothing was done about it in any of these schools, nothing. And, uh, and now here we are, and uh, you know, we see so much um, hostility, um, Hostility is one thing. Acquiescence is another thing. So, um, and you know, the, the acquiescence reminds me of uh, Yehuda Bauer, who was a, he was a survivor of the Holocaust, and, and he was a, became a scholar, and he spoke at the um, German parliament in 1969. And he said, um, as a representative of my people, I have three more commandments to add. Thou shalt never be a perpetrator, thou shalt never be a victim, and thou shalt never, ever be a bystander. And... Uh, and people who are bystanders to, and people who are acquiescing in this anti-Semitism who aren't saying very much because they don't want to alienate this employer or that friend or this group, they're bystanders, right? And uh, one, of the, one of the lessons from Jewish history, but not just Jewish history, one of the, one of the great lessons is never be a bystander. So uh, whenever you see, I mean, Martin Luther King, as usual, put this uh, more beautifully than anybody else did and taught us so much as the greatest American of the 20th century that, you know, that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And, uh, and, um, and, one for, and by standing against injustice is a form of injustice. And that's one of the great things that Martin Luther King taught us is that you can't be a bystander. Well, you can be, but it's absolutely wrong to be a bystander.